In this learning objective, you will analyze the effect of business transactions on the accounting equation. The accounting information system collects and processes transaction data and communicates financial information to decision makers. Accounting information systems rely on a process referred to as the accounting cycle. As you can see from this image, the accounting cycle begins with the analysis of business transactions and ends with the preparation of a post-closing trial balance. We will explain each of these steps in this chapter as well as in Chapter 4. In this chapter, in order to emphasize the underlying concepts and principles, we focus on a manual accounting system. The accounting concepts and principles do not change whether a system is computerized or manual. I'll actually conclude this chapter by briefly looking at a computerized accounting system. To use an accounting information system, you need to know which economic events to record. Not all events or activities represent transactions. For example, hiring a new employee. An accounting transaction occurs when assets, liabilities, or stockholders' equity items change as a result of some economic event. The accounting equation must always balance. Each transaction has a dual or double-sided effect on the equation. For example, if an asset is increased, there must be a corresponding decrease in another asset or an increase in a liability or stockholder's equity item. There are numerous business transactions. Let's look at some possible transactions. I just stated if an asset is increased, there must be a corresponding decrease in another asset or an increase in a liability or stockholder's equity. We can exchange assets, so one asset goes up while another one goes down. A great example is the collection of cash from a customer. So cash is going up, but accounts receivable will be going down. Assets may go up because we've purchased assets on credit. In this example, both inventory and accounts payable increase. Or maybe the business obtained financing from a bank. So in this instance, both cash and notes payable increase. A company may issue stock and receive cash. So cash is going up, assets, and stockholders' equity is going up. Another possibility, we may have paid off a liability, such as accounts payable or notes payable. So cash and asset will decrease as well as a liability, either accounts payable or notes payable. We may have paid a dividend, which decreases both cash and stockholders' equity. Alternatively, we may have two liabilities offsetting, where one increases and one decreases, or we might have two stockholders' equity accounts offsetting each other. We call economic events that require recording in the financial statements accounting transactions. But remember, not all events are recorded and reported in the financial statements. This slide summarizes the decision process companies use to decide whether or not to record economic events. An accounting transaction occurs when assets, liabilities, or stockholders' equity items change as a result of some economic event. The purchase of a computer by General Motors and the payment of rent by Microsoft are examples of events that change a company's assets, liabilities, or stockholders' equity. Having a conversation with a potential customer is not an economic event that requires recording. Each transaction affects at least two accounts. When analyzing transactions, follow these basic steps. Identify the accounts and determine the direction of the effect. Are these accounts increasing or decreasing? And second, verify the accounting equation is in balance. In Chapter 1, we discuss the financial statements for Sierra Corporation. 
To illustrate how economic events affect the accounting equation, we will examine events affecting Sierra during its first month. In order to analyze the transactions, we will expand the basic accounting equation to illustrate the impact of transactions on stockholders' equity. Stockholders' equity is comprised of two parts, common stock and retained earnings. Common stock is affected when the company issues new shares of stock in exchange for cash. Retained earnings is affected when the company recognizes revenue, incurs expenses, or pays dividends. Before we analyze business transactions, we need to talk about two concepts from the next chapter. When a company agrees to perform a service or sell a product to a customer, it has a performance obligation. The revenue recognition principle requires that companies recognize revenue in the accounting period in which the performance obligation is satisfied. This typically occurs when goods are delivered or services are performed. We record revenue when the services are performed. The other half of the transaction depends upon whether or not cash is received at the same time. Cash could be received before the delivery or performance of services, when the goods are delivered or the services have been performed, or after the delivery or performance of services. In this example, cash was received before the goods or services were rendered to the customer. The customer has prepaid for items. We must record the cash when it's received because there's been an exchange, but we don't yet record revenue. Rather, we record a liability, typically called unearned revenue or deferred revenue, because we've received cash, but we still have a liability either to repay the cash or to provide the goods or services that were promised. So in that initial transaction, we are recording cash and we're also recording a liability called unearned revenue. When the product is delivered or the services are provided, revenue will be recognized. When the company delivers the goods or services, the liability unearned revenue is reduced and the revenue account, service revenue, is increased. Delta Airlines does not record revenue when a customer buys a plane ticket, but rather when they provide the service. If you purchase a ticket on May 1st, Delta will record an increase in cash as well as a liability. The revenue will be recognized on June 15th when you actually get on the plane. At that point, Delta reduces the liability and increases or recognizes revenue. Cash can be received on the date the product is delivered or the services are provided. If cash is received at the same time as our goods or services are delivered, we record the revenue and we record the cash at the same time. In many cases, cash is received after the goods are delivered or the services provided. In this example, we establish an asset account called accounts receivable. When the company collects cash from the customer, the receivable will be eliminated. So we increase cash and decrease the accounts receivable. We do not record revenue. It's simply an exchange of one asset for another. On the expense side, we are going to record expenses in the same period as they helped generate the revenue, regardless of when cash happens to be paid. So with the expense matching principle, we can recognize that cash can be paid beforehand on the same day or time that the effort has been incurred or afterwards. We're going to recognize the expense when those goods or services are used, regardless of when cash has been paid. So again, we have the possibility of a two-part transaction. If cash is paid before the expense is incurred, the company establishes a prepaid expense. A prepaid expense is an asset account. The expense will be recorded when incurred. After the expense has been incurred, 
we increase the expense account and decrease the asset account or prepaid expense. A good example of this would be paying for an insurance policy for the entire year. We pay for that insurance policy up front, let's say January 1st, but we use the insurance policy as time goes on or over the course of the year. On January 1st, we're going to recognize that our cash is going down and we're also going to record an asset, prepaid insurance. As time goes on, we're going to use up that prepaid insurance, so we're going to recognize the use of that insurance by recording an expense and correspondingly decreasing the asset that's recorded on our balance sheet. In this case, it would be prepaid insurance. If cash is paid at the same time as we're using up our expenses, we're going to have a fairly simple transaction. We're going to record the cash going out, and we're also going to record the expense. When cash is paid after the company incurs an expense, a liability account must be established, so we will record both an expense as well as a liability. When the cash is actually paid, we're going to recognize cash is going out the door, and we're going to reduce the corresponding liability. An example would be we have hired an employee and the employee has worked for us. We will pay the employee at the end of a two week period. So in that initial period, we're going to recognize that we've used the employee's services and we need to record the expense as well as the liability that recognizes that we still owe the employee whatever their wages might be. So we would have both an expense being recorded and liability. When we pay the employee, we then reduce both cash and the corresponding liability.